Now on Friday, ratings agency Moody's affirmed South Africa's investment-grade credit rating and revised its credit outlook to stable from negative, saving the previous weakening of the national institutions was gradually reversing, uh, which, uh, support, which also supported an economic recovery. We're now joined by uh, Isaac Manchego, who is an economist at uh, Nedbank, and Annamel Bishop, chief economist at uh, Investment Bank Limited, for more on this. Good to have you here, guys. Um, first of all, I think one might argue that uh, maybe, well, from the pollsters and many of the commentators that uh, enough had been done, like the uh, finance minister actually did mention that enough had been done to uh, sanction a stable outlook. But uh, did you guys see this coming? I think I, I expected there certainly to be no change to our credit ratings from Moody's. Moody's tends to be the most positive credit rating on South Africa out of the three key agencies, Fitch, S&P and Moody's. And of course, they have indicated to us before that they'd given us a review period that started on the 24th of um, November last year, whereas other agencies, Fitch and S&P, just cut us straight to some investment grade. So we were expecting them to leave us unchanged, but I think we we're of half a mind whether we'd get a stable outlook or a negative outlook, and that's quite key, because it now means we had a stabilization of our credit ratings at this level, and of course the next move could be a positive outlook, and therefore eventually an upgrade. Mm, I said this has happened fairly quickly for us. I mean, we faced a term where we were being downgraded left, right and centre and really the sentiment around investment in the country was really bleak. Come in Sir Ramaphosa and we have this Ramaphoria going on and we're seeing these changes. But surely it's just not policy certainty that we need to really maintain South Africa's um, positive outlook. Ab absolutely. You know, we've seen the change in political direction. I call it because of, you know, the leadership change in the ANC, leading to the leadership change in government. And we saw some significant, you know, movements regarding, you know, leadership of the National Treasury. And we are seeing movements, for instance, at SARS, which is quite important. Mm -hmm. But what we need to do right now is implement fundamental macroeconomic changes. Because what we need to do is to boost the growth base, we need a higher growth rate, and even the Modi statement on Friday, you know, it stressed that we need to deal with the unemployment rate in South Africa. So yes, a lot of work ahead for us, and we need to start implementing real measures. Uh, I'm looking at the statement here from Moody's, and uh, they do make it very clear, uh, Annabelle. Um, uh, they, they do expect government debt burden to us stabilized to around 55% of GDP over the 2018-2020 period. Now, given uh, maybe uh, the, the toppling of uh, the commission at SARS, is that enough to uh, ease the fiscal stress, given the, the fact that uh, the, 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 jet, the debt to uh, tax ratio is also not really going up? Look, I think what we ultimately need is fast economic growth. You know, when you get into an environment of fast economic growth, a lot of your problems tend to fall away if it's sustained. Mm -hmm. And if you recall the years 2000s when we had Tom and Becky as president, we had economic growth rising to 5 to 7%. We actually went into a, a surplus on the budget um, balance, and we obviously saw credit rating upgrades, and eventually we got an A-grade rating. And it indeed, it was Moody's again that gave us the A-grade rating. And that allowed us to move into this Citibank World Global Bond Index, of course, with all the positive benefits benefits that come from it. And looking forwards, that is a key issue, you know, getting our economic growth up. And that, of course, requires instilling strength in business confidence. And in turn, government needs to now st start putting a lot of certainty out there from a policy perspective. We've had that from a political perspective already, with Soram Opposed becoming president of the ANC, then of South Africa. But moving forwards now, we need to see what's going to come out of the Investment Summit, the Unemployment Employment Job Summit, and of course the Land Summit that's kicking off tomorrow at Gibbs. All of these are key areas that investors are going to be looking at particularly carefully, and that needs to boost the investor climate for South Africa. In terms of the government finances themselves, they're in a tricky position. They need a lot more revenue. And obviously, they're battling to raise substantially more tax. So ultimately, it is coming down, unfortunately, to a fast economic growth rate. And when you do get economic growth of 5 to 7%, you actually see your unemployment rate fall quite fast. We saw it drop down to 22% in the 2000s. And then you start to get inclusive growth. People start to be included. But obviously, that's a very high rate. And it would have dropped down into the teens if we'd had that 5 to 7% economic growth for a long period of time, and not just for a couple of years before, obviously, then Tom and Becky came out of his position. We need to see that. We estimate for 20 to 30 years seeing strong economic growth like that and you know it can be done look at India look at other China look at other countries in the world in order to get unemployment down to single digits that will really inspire the credit rating agencies and then we could see I think a return to that type of A grade rating that Moody's had us on 
if we actually see the benefits spread through the economy, we see a reduction in um, poverty, inequality, unemployment, and we just see you know, a much more positive investor climate generated here in South Africa. Mm, Isaac, I can see you nodding the entire time, <laughs> so you really agree with her sentiments, but I'm really interested on this notion that you've just picked up on there, Annabelle, fast economic growth. How do we start getting that going? The NDP states it quite clearly, right? We need to deal with the structural constraints to grow. Our product markets, our labor markets are too rigid. You know, the education system needs to be sorted out. I mean, we've seen, you know, more money being dedicated towards tertiary education, but we need to ensure that the labor market is going to absorb the new graduates. Mm -hmm. That is the challenge that we face. It's all about growth, because once we get the growth story right, you know, if I can just go back to what Annabelle mentioned, in the mid-2000s, the growth rate of, you know, just above 5%, that will help us to deepen domestic credit markets. And in that situation, government will be able to even afford or carry more debt. I mean, we saw that happening exactly in the 2000s, you know, Domestic credit markets were broadened as more people were employed. You know, there were there was a need rather uh, for more long-term credit products because people were saving for retirement and all that. And government can issue more debt in that market, and the cost of debt even came down. So that's we what we really need to address. The structural changes will help us to make the economy grow at a faster pace, create more jobs, and in that way you know, we are sort of able to sustain this robust environment that we actually need. Mm. Right. Guys, one word that is coming out many times here is jobs. I, I don't want to sound like Trump, but <laughs> jobs, jobs, <laughs> jobs. Uh, and and I it has me thinking, is it time for a policy reset whereby away from a, a single mandate like the EU does deploy, a monetary policy, where you only target uh, inflation and you only look at price stability, we move towards maybe the US model where you do have a dual mandate looking at uh, inflation vis-a-vis -vis unemployment to move forward as a monetary policy. Is it time for a policy reset? Maybe I'll tell you what you. the difference is between ourselves here in South Africa and countries like you mentioned, the EU, the US. They don't have structural unemployment. And that's something that's really key to bear in mind. So we talked about unemployment rate dropping down to 22% in the 2000s. We had a particularly strong economic growth period. You know, we, we really couldn't have done better than we did in that mm. period. And obviously, why 22%? Why didn't we drop down to 5% unemployment? And that's because we have a huge number of individuals who want jobs but just don't have the skills that the economy needed. But also, the economy didn't run strong enough for long enough to absorb everyone into the net. So Momentum. dropping from 30% to 22%, you can do that in a few years, but you need 10, 20 years to run faster. So first, we need to erode the structural unemployment. Then we can move to a situation, which is what happens in these countries that you mentioned, the advanced economies. That's why they're high income or advanced economies, because mm. they don't have structural unemployment. They have cyclical unemployment, so as your economy moves through the cycles, they have seasonal unemployment. We know that, you know, perhaps more people get employed in the agricultural sector during harvest periods, more people get employed in the retail sector over the festive periods, but they don't have this long-term, obdurate, structural unemployment. And sadly, that requires structural change. It requires structural reforms. It can't be changed by monetary policy, which is a cyclical indicator really. So that helps with the cyclical nature of the economy and that's why our Reserve Bank government has been in absolute pains to say over the past several years, almost the past decade, as economic growth just collapsed so severely back down to zero percent, that he can't boost economic growth. That it's a structural situation and as Isaac was touching on, we need to work through these structural reforms. Mm, very quickly, as Annabel touches on the NPC there, Isaac, your thoughts on what's expected to come out of NPC this week. I An mean opportunity to cut and we should not miss it. I mean, <laughs> this is the opportunity <laughs> this week. So you really yeah. think that this is the opportune time for the MPC to cut the rates? To be a bit controversial, if I was the governor, I'd go for <laughs> 50 <laughs> basis points. Keep so that positive momentum going. <laughs> Absolutely. 50 basis points. Yeah. Mm -hmm.